Hi, my name is Mark, and today I'd like to tell you more about Ironwood uh, from Mindfresh Games, and thanks uh, Mindfresh Games for sending it for review. And Ironwood is a strategy, tactical, war game for one to two players, when one person plays as, as Ironclad and the other as, as Woodwalkers, two asymmetrical factions fighting with each other for, for dominance. Uh, in this game, uh, both these factions they have different playstyle and have different uh, victory condition. Mm, if you play solo, you play against um, Iron Bot or Wooden Bot. Both factions they have a dedicated solo bot with different rules in the game. Uh, now I will show you how the game plays more or less, and then I will tell you my opinion on this game. So this is how Iron Wood looks uh, when it's prepared for play. The main part of this game is this game board where the action takes place. You have mountains, you have forests, you have two different factions, woodwalkers and ironclads. Ironclads, they dominate the mountains and they move uh, and deploy units only on the mountains. And woodwalkers, they prefer to stay in the forest and they only deploy units in the forest and they can move only from forest uh, to a forest. We have outer forests and we have inner forests. Also, we have outer mountains and we have inner mountains. Um, first, I will tell you a little about both factions uh, because they are quite asymmetrical. They have different goals and dif uh, different style of play. And then I will tell you how the game plays because apart from the differences, uh, there are some similarities in both uh, factions. I mean, they both use action cards to play uh, to play different actions, uh, they deploy units, they move around the board. So first we have woodwalkers. And woodwalkers are uh, connected with nature and their goal is to uh, locate and find three uh, totems, magical totems. And when they locate and they find a totem somewhere on the board, they have to transport this totem to outer forest. If they manage to do it, they will place the totem on their player board. If they locate and secure three totems, they win the game. Uh, but when they start the game, they have no idea where the totems are. And that's why they have this vision deck. The vision deck uh, is a deck of cards that they will draw during the game when they play specific action cards. They also start with one card already in their hand. And these cards show them where they can try to locate the totem. For example, this card says Gallimore and points to this mountain. And this is this mountain here. Or you have Cobaltis, this is the mountain here. Different mountains, uh, when you take a card from this deck and you have it in your hand, this is the mountain that you can try to locate the totem uh, nearby. Of course, you can have more uh, cards in your hand, more vision cards in your hand at the same time. It's up to you where you go and where you locate this totem. Um, they can only deploy new units in the outer forest. This is their thing. Uh, when they move, they usually can move single units around the board because the ironclads, they can only move the whole warbands, the groups of units. And woodwalkers, because they prefer more like a guerrilla style, uh, they can you move a single unit. When they discover a totem near a mountain, uh, the idea is that they have to be in an inner forest adjacent to the mountain that they want to look for totem. And they need to have the vision card of the specific mountain in their hand. And this mountain must be free of ironclad units because if there are units uh, of ironclads, they first must be uh, destroyed removed from this mountain in order to uh, discover a totem. If they uh, manage to fulfill all these conditions, they will place a totem on the board. And now if they have any unit in the same spot as the totem and they perform a move action, they can move the unit with the totem uh, to a new spot. And then if they manage to move the totem to the outer forest, it's secured and placed on their board. So this is their uh, goal. They have this deck of action cards. Uh, Iron class, they also have the action deck of action cards. These cards are unique to the Woodwalker faction. 
they are completely different than the cards from Ironclad. This deck is shuffled at the start of the game and uh, each action card, as the name says, uh, tells you different actions that you can perform. The game is about playing action cards and performing different actions from these cards. Apart from this deck of cards, uh, each faction starts with three uh, starting cards. They, are, they have the star here and different background. These are the cards that you never lose during the game because the other action cards here, when they are used, they are spent and discarded. The starting basic action cards, they always go back to your hand at the end of the game. So we have Woodwalkers uh, trying to find totems and secure them. And we also have Ironclad. Ironclads, they want to build forges and this is their main goal. Uh, one thing I forgot to tell you about are these crystals here. And these crystals here are the, you can say, currency in this game. Uh, both factions will gain crystals during the game and they will be able to spend them. Uh, one way to spend crystals is to recruit. Uh, both factions can recruit at the end of each round and the recruiting one unit costs two crystals. You can also spend crystals to perform some additional actions from the action cards. Sometimes the action cards say, like, spend one crystal to do something. If you have crystals and you want, you can spend them to uh, perform the action from the card. But Ironclad needs, they need crystals to build forges. Forges are these metal tokens here. And when they want to build a forge, they first need to build a foundation. And foundation is this token here on this side. Foundations can only be built on the outer mountains, not on the inner mountains. When they build a foundation, this is for free, but they need to control the specific mountain. And if they play a specific, uh, the correct action card, they can place a foundation like this. I would need to first have a unit here, for example. And then when a foundation is placed somewhere on the board, they can perform another action. Uh, from an action card to build a forge. If they pay five crystals, they can flip this foundation to the forge side. And if they build three forges during the game, they win the game. The forge gives them different benefits. They can recruit units only in the forge. Uh, Ironclad start with one forge and this is Ferrum. This is the starting location and the, you can say capital of Ironclads. This is also a forge, so at the start of the game they can only recruit here in the Ferrum. But during the game when they have more forges around the board, they can recruit in these forges as well. Forge gives them additional power to attack if a combat happens at the mountain when there is a forge located. But forges are also useful for the drill. And drill, this is a special machine from Iron Clats that will move around the board to harvest crystals. Because crystals for Rootwalkers are mostly used to recruit new units or sometimes to spend on action cards. And for Ironclads, uh, crystals are necessary to build forges because they need three forges to win the game. Each forge costs five crystals, so they need at least 15 crystals to build those forges. So if they move a drill uh, by using a special action card, they move the drill to an adjacent location. Remember, they can only move around mountains all the units from Iron Class. And if the drill arrives to a mountain without a forge, they will harvest uh, crystals. You have this drill track on this uh, Iron Clad board. And this cube here starts here. Anytime this drill moves to a different mountain location without a forge, you will move this cube to the right and you will gather the bonus shown here. Here we gain two crystals. Here we gain uh, one crystal and you can look at the top cards from the vision deck of uh, woodwalkers to know what they are planning. Here you will gain one crystal and uh, you can draw one card from the deck. And if you progress from here, you go always back, back, back and back. Uh, all the crystals that the drill will gather, they will be stored in the cargo area and you cannot spend them. When the drill uh, goes to a location with a forge, you can unload the crystals here and use them in the future, and this track uh, resets. So the drill is very he helpful like harvesters in Dune to gather resources for Ironclad. 
but of course woodworkers can try to attack this drill and uh, destroy it if they uh, successfully destroy the drill they can steal one cube from the drill and uh, one not cube one crystal and the remaining crystals in the cargo area are uh, discarded so as an ironclad uh, leader you have to be careful because a drill with a lot of crystals is a lucrative uh, interesting target for the woodworkers so you have the drill to gain more crystals you have your foundations then the foundations and they can be turned into forges with three forges you will win the game of course you also have this deck of action cards that uh, you will draw from the deck and play them to perform different actions uh, iron class they also have they have this regular units the small one but they have also golems uh, if you play a specific action card that allows you to create a golem you can create it you will place it on the board and this is a more heavy unit a golem has got two let's imagine two health points because the regular unit they just need one hit during combat to be uh, removed uh, from the board to destroy a golem unit to deal two damage so as you can see iron class are more about power and you know technology and drilling and uh, having powerful units and woodwalkers are more about sneaking around the forest attacking iron class from different sides and discovering this uh, totems so how the game plays uh, each round starts with uh, gaining uh, crystals woodwalkers gain one crystal at the start of each round iron class they gain uh, two crystals then you will draw two cards at the start of the game you can just take two top cards or you can take four and choose two of them so there are the starting cards here and as i said you always start around with your uh, basic cards the cards with the star icon here the cards the basic cards are necessary for your faction because they have the most important actions like building a forge for iron class or uh, discovering a totem for woodwalkers uh, woodwalkers always they always start each uh, each round and a round contains three turns during each turn uh, you will uh, have to play one action card from your hand and you will perform the action written on them you have always to you always have to perform actions from top to bottom you can skip one of the actions but you cannot change order of actions and they do different things uh, like moving around the board uh, recruiting units uh, gaining crystals uh, attacking units uh, all the things that i have told you about in the last 10 minutes you can do by playing a specific action card if you play an action card you will place it in one of the three slots you have three slots here one two three four three cards and when each player plays three cards the round ends so woodwalkers play one card then iron class then woodwalkers iron class woodwalkers iron class and this is the end uh, basically of the round if you don't want to play a card from your hand or you have no cards in your hand you can place a cube in a card spot and then you will draw one card from your action deck after all players play uh, free action cards then there is the end of the round at the end of the round you have to discard cards so you have not more than eight cards in your hand if there are any totems that were uh, discovered during the round and they didn't uh, the woodwalker didn't secure them and transport them to the outer forest they will slowly fade the totem uh, token has two sides so at the end of the round each totem that is still on the board goes to the faded side if a token is already on the faded side at the end of the round is discarded so as woodwalkers you have to be in a hurry and you have to quickly try to secure those totems because after one round they will fade and after another round they will disappear then at the end of the round you can also recruit uh, recruiting costs to crystals iron clads can recruit only in forges so here or another forge that was built during the game and woodwalkers can only uh, recruit in the outer forest 
In the game also the outer forest is not reachable by ironclads, so ironclads cannot attack units, uh, wooden, woodwalkers units in the outer forest. Also, woodwalkers cannot attack from outer forest. Um, and then after you recruit, new round starts. All the normal action cards that were played during the round, they are discarded. All the basic action cards that were played, if they were played, they go back to your hand and you will retrieve it. Retrieve them at the start of next round. You will draw two new cards from the action deck. Mm. One thing I didn't tell you about is combat. Combat, when it happens, uh, there have to be there have to be units adjacent to each other and if you want to attack someone you have to play a specific action card that allows you to attack for example this uh, card tells you attack farum or here you can just move and attack if you play a card that allows you to attack there will be combat at the start of the combat each player can choose one of the action cards uh, in uh, their hand to play it during the combat. And each action card, apart from the mm, action area here that you use when you play the card as an action card, has got these numbers in the corner. This is attack power, defense power, and domination. So at the start of the combat, you know how, much, how many units both factions have, and each faction can play secretly, choose one card and play. So let's say I will play, I don't know, this card for the mm, woodwalkers and the ironclad player let's take randomly will play this card when both players choose to play a card you you can skip it and you don't have to play a card but maybe you want to then you will combine and uh, reveal those cards and you will compare the numbers so for example here this uh, card from the Ironclads tell us that they deal two damage, they have zero defense. This uh, deals one damage and they have two defense. Because they have two attack and they have two defense, uh, no Woodwalker unit is destroyed. Woodwalkers, they have one attack and Ironclads, they have zero defense. So one unit from this mountain gets removed. And now you have, you have to compare dominance. Dominance is uh, calculated by counting the number of surviving units and adding the number next to this flag. So ironclad dominance is 2 plus 3 is 5. Woodwalkers, they have 3 plus 2, also 5. So now it's a draw. When there is a draw, the attacking uh, force is victorious. So in this case, the woodwalkers will win the combat. Those cards played during the combat, they are discarded. So it's always a tough choice if you want to play an action card um, in combat or keep it as an action card to play in a future turn. Uh, if you chose to play a basic action card during combat, this card will go back to your hand at the end of the round. But if you uh, play a normal, regular action card, and during combat, this card will be discarded uh, forever. <laughs> so it's always a tough choice. And if you won, here Woodwalkers won, they can the, uh, force the units that lost to retreat to an adjacent space. So they can, for example, place these two units here. And now this uh, mountain is uncontrolled. And if, for example, Woodwalkers, they have a vision card of Paladimor, they would be able to discover a totem here. So this is how you fight in the game. Uh, the action cards are important because uh, the dominance value is most important to determine who is the winner, but uh, the dominance, apart from uh, calculating, taking the number from the card, is also added from the remaining units. So the more units you have, the higher chance that you have more domination than your, than your um, opponent. And this is basically how you play the game uh, multiplayer. Uh, as I said, uh, woodwalkers, they need to find and secure free totems, and ironclads, they need to build free forges. In a solo game, uh, the things that you do during the game are basically the same. If you play ironclads, you have to you know 
Move this drill, gather crystals and build forges. If you play as woodwalkers, you have to discover the totems. But you will play against a bot. In this game, uh, in the solo mode, you have two different bots. You have wooden bot and you have iron bot. And let's say that if I play iron club against the bot, at the start of the game, I have to flip the player board to the solo uh, side. And here it says wooden bot. And all the actions here they summarize the action for the bot on this side for player. And if I play against wooden bot, uh, my actions, as I said, will be basically the same, but the automa will play a little differently. I mean, uh, in the rulebook, you have a special set of rules just for the iron bot. It's a solo mode against the iron bot. And you have all the rules how iron bot plays. And you have separate section against solo mode against the wooden bot where the rulebook tells you how wooden bot uh, behaves wooden bot is a little more complex to uh, maintain as, a, as an automa because they try to find the totems they have try to secure the totems so uh, you will have to do a little more thinking when you play against wooden bot because wooden bot has got more rules but basically, the main thing that Automa, the bot, will do in uh, its turn, it will be revealing top cards from the hand deck. You create this uh, small deck of cards. It's called the hand of, of the bot. And you take the top card and you take a closer look at the action cards. All the action cards, they have these symbols here. And these symbols tell you what the bot is doing uh, in a solo mode. Normally in a multiplayer mode, you don't look at the icon, they do nothing. In a solo mode, you can skip this whole part here. You just look at those icons. And you have this handy help sheet. For example, it tells iron bot action chart. And this side of this uh, help sheet tells you all the, what all the icons on the action card mean when you play against iron bot so you take a look at the card you look at the symbols here and you find them here and you perform those actions and it tells you exactly what to do gain crystals move the drill move the unit uh, build a forge or if you play against wooden bot uh, to discover iron bot has also got different stances here like aggressive stance defensive stance expansive stance they change depending on the state of the board and they give some additional bonuses to the iron bot. And if you play against a uh, wooden bot, they have two sets of action, disruptive and exalted side. And depending if there is a totem already on the board, they either are on the exalted side or disruptive. If they are still looking for a totem, they are in the disruptive state here and they perform actions from this side. If they find that locate a totem, you turn the sheet to this side and they will try to bring this totem to the outer forest. There are a lot, a lot of rules. It's not an easiest automa to learn because uh, both automa factions, they play differently. They have a lot of actions. Uh, this is quite handy, this uh, solo uh, sheet of paper because it sums all the actions, but there are things that are not on this uh, solo, uh, solo help sheet but you will have to check them in the rulebook. And this is movement, the most complex part of the <laughs> bot, uh, of the solo mode, because the wooden bot and the iron bot, they have different type of movement. For example, wooden bot have plunder movement, secure movement or interfere movement. And the wooden bot uh, have got chase movement, protect movement, and expand movement. And depending on the action, you have to look at the chart in the rulebook it tells you what is the target of movement, what is the source of the movement, where they try to move and how they will move. I wish that they added this part of the rulebook on a, a separate like a card or additional piece of paper because it will be easier to uh, check it. Um, you also get this magic die in the solo mode because when you play solo, you play on the other side of the game board. It looks exactly the same, just it has numbers on different mountains and different forests. And during the solo mode, solo game, if there is a tie and you have to decide, for example, which 
uh, you need to move or way where they should move and there are more than one op there is more than one option you will roll this die and it will tell you highest odd number or highest even number or the lowest even number or the lowest odd number and it will tell you which option you should choose where you have more than one um, so basically this is how you play ironwood multiplayer and solo as i said the bots they have a lot of rules but after you play it once or twice it gets easier uh, so now let me tell you what i think about this game so what are the pros of this game i like this um, cool strategic uh, tactical gameplay here it's very interesting and engaging but also the game is not rules heavy i mean you have asymmetrical factions that do different things have different goals but it's not really difficult to learn the game the game is quite straightforward uh, each faction of course has got different action cards but each the actions that you take in the game are not very difficult uh, it's maybe difficult to have a good strategy in this game but it's not e uh, hard to to learn this game um, both factions are very asymmetrical they have different action cards and different goals and different playstyle so this is really cool it's not like they have one action different and everything is the same both factions are really really different from each other it reminds me a little of root in which each faction plays differently and you have similar vibe in uh, ironwood artwork in this game is amazing the game looks great the game board everything the cards uh, all the tokens in the game they correspond to each faction like you have um, um you have ironclad and they like you have ironclad and they are the industrial faction here and you have all the tokens are made from metal and you have uh, woodwalkers and all the tokens are made from wood it's really really cool um, very good production quality the components are in they have great quality and the cards are nice uh, you have two trays to store all the all the components so the production quality of this game is really good and i think the solo mode is quite clever because um, each bot uh, tries to replicate the specific style and vibe of each faction and i think they managed to do it so like if you play against the uh, iron bot they try to build forges and they try to place foundations on the board and if you play they try they harvest a lot of crystals with the with the drill and if you play against uh, woodwalkers you're gonna feel that they try to find the totems they they don't play with a lot of force but they are rather they have the guerrilla style of combat so it's really nice and the clever mode is i think quite well uh, designed uh, what are the cons of ironwood mm, i think that the replayability in a way is uh, limited because you have only two factions of course both these factions they have a different uh, decks of cards and you don't see all the action cards in each game so mm, the uh, replayability comes from different action cards that you will uh, get during the game because they allow you to do different things but you have only two factions so if this is a game that you will like to play seven days seven uh, days a week i think that after a week or two you might get bored uh, of course both players can switch factions but still you only have two factions here and the other con i think that uh, the solo mode is quite complex uh, it works i think in my opinion it works really good but it's quite complex and uh, it was co-created or created by david turchi and <laughs> his solo modes are usually quite complex and you have a lot of rules for each uh, bot so basically if you want to play iron with uh, solo uh, you have to learn four factions because you have this uh, iron clad and woodwalkers for the player and you have uh, iron bot and wooden bot for the for automa mm, because even though the bots they share some similarities um, from the player rules they have different sets of rules different priorities uh, different sheet of actions and so on and so on so if you like simple solo modes um, this may this one may be not for you uh, in this game you will probably spend the same amount of time maintaining automa than doing your own uh, actions overall i really like ironwood it's a nice game uh, i wanted to say small game not a small one in terms of of the box maybe 
but uh, quite quite small, not very complicated, fun, engaging uh, strategy, tactical game with uh, beautiful artwork, uh, great production quality, great component. Everything that you have seen in the video is just from the one and only you know edition of this game. There is no deluxe edition of this game with metal coins and you know i don't know some special stuff everything that was on this video is from the retail edition only the promo pack i think was maybe not exclusive but it was given to to backers on game found uh, the solo mode even though it's quite complex it's really well designed and i don't think it's possible to create a solo boat uh, but it's easy to maintain in a game like this the fun of this game comes from playing asymmetrical factions and from playing against an opponent and both bots in this game, they are your opponents. If they would create a like simple bot that is doing something only to mess with your action, it will be no fun because this is a game designed where, you know, woodwalkers, they need to play, play against uh, iron class. So, I think that the solo mode is okay. It's it's quite complex, but it's really well designed. And especially if you are a solo gamer, there are not that many games like strategy war games where you play against uh, an opponent uh, dedicated for solo gamers. So this one is, I think, quite quite cool. And um, even though this game was on GameFound, I think it will be you can still pre-order it. I will leave link in the description of this video. But I think it will be sent to uh, people in, in September, so quite soon. I think this game was quite ready when it was uh, on GameFound. So it's not a typical GameFound, you know, Kickstarter game where you have to wait two years to get it. It will be sent to people in, in a month or two. So really, really nice. So this is my uh, opinion on Ironwood. Uh, click the like button if you like this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I will be very happy. Um, you can visit me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. You will find all the links in the description of this video. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.